What's going on? My name is Cole Connor. Today, I want to talk about how I edit my interior real estate photography photos. That's five bracketed HDR Airbnb style photos. Let's get into it. What's going on? My name is Cole Connor. I'm an artist and entrepreneur, and I was put here to do two things, create and inspire. Thanks for being here. Let's get into it. So I just uh, merged the photos and in, or I merged this photo. I imported the DNG file into Lightroom and we see we've got nothing going on over here. So what I always do, just like I do with my exteriors, I add on one of my interior presets, which you can download for free in the description if you would like, if it will help you out. Um, I've got interior one and interior two. I've been really liking interior two because it ups the contrast and the whites, um, but it's really whatever you're going for. So I'm gonna throw on interior two here. Now, honestly, for a lot of people, this might already be like a dope photo, but the let's just go quickly through for those of you that are newer into this field. I've got the exposure cranked up really here because the lights, the window, it just, the lighting in general looks really good. So up in the exposure, I really just feels like shines a light on how bright it is in this, um, in this home. I up the contrast, like I was saying, I really like the way that looks. You can go back down, but you see it just looks faded. I mean, that's negative, but right here, I mean, you could, you could work with that, but I really like it here. Shadows, got those upped a little bit as well, um, which that takes away from the contrast a little bit, but I like the balance there. White's got it cranked up a little bit. It could probably go a little more, honestly. Um, highlights. That's going to take away this brightness a little bit, mainly out the windows though. So I think it's okay. Um, I did mess with the texture a little bit. Dehay, I mean, not dehaze, clarity, vibrance and saturation up a little bit. Because this house is so well lit when you're doing HDR photography, it just, there's not a ton of white balance issues. Now, if you really look, you can see this kind of yellow on the ceilings here and here, and then it's a little bit greenish over here um so it's not perfect but it's way better than some really dingy homes i've shot many many times then this is what i'm doing with the highlights lights darks shadows you can play with these to your own taste but that's what my preset does here i've got the yellow knocked down a little bit saturation wise not messing with these colors too much lens profile i shoot with the uh, 12 to 24 and I shot about uh, probably more like F7, but that's cool. Um, and then it's got the auto transform on. The verticals are pretty good here. Um, I could adjust a little bit this way. Oh, it's pretty close. Okay. Cool, so now here's the part that I really wanna get into and that's messing with these window pools and brightening up this area over here. So it's, I mean, it really just depends on how much time you have, uh, how much you charge and things like that. Like you could spend a lot of time per photo. But first off, what I'm gonna do is come over here and this is how I do the majority of my window pools. I'm not gonna mess with these back here um, because it would just take so much time detail wise to try to see through this and the door, I just like how there's so much light right here. But what I might do here is add a brush and not really care about being outside the lines and turn this exposure straight down. Like you could go deep down and you could see out the window perfectly clear. Um, depends on who you're editing for if they want that. I personally, I think for this house, Gonna do like negative 94, cut the highlights down so I can um, see pretty well out of it, but it's not all the way to where it looks so unnatural. And then I'll probably up the saturation for the outside. A lot of times when you're bringing the exposure down, I'm gonna go a little bit more just to show y'all it, the color of the outside is turns bluish, turns bluish. So a lot of times I just go ahead and change the temperature to a little more yellow and then probably contrast it a little bit. So as you can see, if someone was like, yo, I really want the outdoors to be perfectly clear, then I would go down here and then I would change the dehaze up. Um, and then I would probably back off here and it's literally like perfectly clear up the shadows a little bit. We'll keep it like that. 
for now, um, dehaze is too much. We're going to go down. Boom. Oh, now it looks too blue again. Okay. That's perfect. Okay. So now what do I do with all this ugly area right here? Well, you're going to go to the erase tool. Now there's tons, tons of different strategies for this, but this is how I do it. And it can be time consuming, which is why I don't go hard on all homes. But for this one, I just really love the way this image looked. So I wanted to do uh, window pools this way. But honestly, m most times there's a window, I do a window pool. Um, I just might not get as detailed. It just depends on the client and the home. It depends on what really matters. Like, does this really matter for what the client needs the photos for or not? Yeah, so as you can see, I'm clicking here, I'm erasing it, and then I'm holding the shift button. And what that's gonna do is create a straight line. And that makes all the difference so you don't have to be just like rubbing around and accidentally going, ah, no, I shouldn't have done that. Um, yeah, see, that's not what you want. Boom. All right, so yeah, I'm literally just going through here, doing the same thing. So as you can see, when I erased right here, this is like super overexposed and it doesn't really look good. So we're gonna confirm that by just making sure we erase all around here to make sure that it's not just an issue of not being completed. So, so the computer is not usually this slow. It's because screen recording is playing. So I'm going to figure something else out. So depending on how detailed you want to be, you could zoom in on the photos and make sure that you don't have these little, because you see this is where the brush was erased um, because I didn't go in and zoom and make the detail. Now, most of the time people will probably never notice that, but that is something that you could do. And then my last thing that I would really do on this photo, which hopefully my computer is gonna let me do it, is I would go back to the brushes here. Yeah, I mean, you could really change the, make it way more blue. The house felt warm though, so I wouldn't do that. Um, okay, I'm gonna try one more time. Here we go, and it's popped up. So yeah, I'm gonna go to the brush here, and it's really up to your preference. Um, I could make this photo more, uh, more blue, especially over at the bottom. But what I'm going to do is come over here. I feel like this area is a little dark and bluish. Um, so we're going to cut up the exposure. Um, that might be a little too high. And then cut the highlights down because it's coming out these windows really dramatically. up in the shadows, also up in the contrast. Exposure back up a little bit, and then up in the pink a little bit. I want it to match really well, and then a little bit up here. I feel like that's pretty close, but like I said, you could always go in with the detail a little more, cut the feather on this brush down, and yeah, I could go like boom, and then hold that shift button, boom. Go all the way across to make sure I get in all these areas, boom, boom. Just like that. And then, I mean, same principle over here, really. Um, Let's see what this brush looks like right here. That's doable. I don't know if I love it here, but you can see, I think it's really fun to just kind of see what works, honestly. I mean, I could throw this, I mean, it's really a little too yellow. So yeah, I'm gonna, I would cancel that out here. And a part of me really wants to just, oh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna add another brush, and then go from here to here, here, a 
something like this crank it up a little bit and then here boom boom so that just gives a little bit of brightness over here if you wanted to show detail um so if i was to keep editing it i'm not going to bore y'all and keep on going but yeah i could i feel like i could do some work over here as far as changing the color um definitely over here like it does look a little yellow so i would maybe go back down on that a little bit um, and maybe just the whole white balance just overall as a photo um, maybe I would just make it a little more blue like this and then come back over here to the colors where are they here they are and then go to blue because there's not a ton of blue in the image like if you crank it up you'll see it's out there but yeah you see how you know over here and here's a little blue so I'm just gonna cut that down a little bit here um, and then yeah I feel like because this is so underexposed now or not technically underexposed but you can see right through it I feel like we can crank it up a little more turn the highlights down a little more and this is really bothering me over here now so I'm gonna add this brush one more time boom and yeah it's just too blue so yeah, we'll do that. Boom, and that's pretty solid. That's how you edit Airbnb interior design, five bracketed HDR photography. Uh, like I said, you can download the presets uh, in the description. If you have any questions, comments, please let me know. Um, and if you got value from this, please subscribe. My name is Cole Connor, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Hey,